Hello, you beautiful people. This is Uncle Ko, and I do have something very interesting. Let's take a look. Here, let me run this. Now I'll talk. Hello, everybody. This is Uncle Ko, and I do have something very interesting for you. So five seconds. Boom. We're going to get it very fast. It's super fast. What you're seeing here is a fast whisper that running on your own servers, and you can use it for yourself. And the nice thing about it is I'm running in a collab. I will show it to you, but let's have more fun. Now, this was recording from the microphone. What are you going to record from the audio file? So we can just do the same thing. I'll show you the code later. So just going to pass and golem. I'll tell you about the golem a little bit later. So this is a 15 minutes audio. So we're going to press the inner 15 minutes. So we're going to wait a little bit. Let's see how long it's going to take. It's 15 minutes, guys. And this is a good quality model. It's not a kind of a small model. So let's see. I'm going to wait a little bit, a little bit for this. Golem. This is Hunt for Golem. You know that the Lord of the Ring is coming December 2026. I'm super excited for that. So that's why I took it. Okay, 23 seconds. And now you do have that. So if I write cat output, we're going to get, wow, all the golem stories. Just beautiful, fantastic. It produces two formats, like just a normal text or sub subtitles with the details, tokens, and everything else. It's really beautiful. So now let's go for another one. Now look at this. This is uh, a, a one from, from the uh, Nerd of the Ring, one of my favorite YouTube channel. <laughs> and I'm going to take this and convert this to um, the audio. So I do have the links here, so I can copy paste. Uh, now you can see that I pass with the YouTube URL and I want to save the audio. So you're going to take, you're going to download the files because the follower already downloaded so super fast. And again, the 50 minutes and I'm going to give you the uh, transcription. So now if you're interested, you can watch the rest of this video, which is about how to build this for yourself. And this is part of another project that I'm going to release it very soon. So I found out, I thought maybe it's good that I just share it. It's very handy. Many projects these days, they need such a kind of things. And it's really fast, even in a kind of normal GPU. So stay tuned. I'm going to continue and talk about it. Let's go and talk about the code. Okay. First part, I'm going to talk about how you can create the server that listen and get the audio stream and return it back. It's very simple and surprisingly very simple. First of all, you're going to just install faster Whisper. You can go to the GitHub, it's great, it's fantastic, or you can even dig in and then work with the model by yourself. But I think this is good. Give them a star. I like the library. And then because I am running this in Colab, I need uh, the Nest Async I.O. to be able to do that kind of things in the collab. And also I have Pi ng Rogue to bring the ng Rogue and make a proxy and then be able to use it out of this. So I run my server in collab. You can do that. There are multiple ways, even without the Pi ng Rogue, but the Pi ng Rogue is clean. You have to go to the ng Rogue, create a simple accounts and get an authentication token. If you don't know, uh, I may find some links or YouTube. You can find a lot of it. I, what do you want me? I can also create and explain to you how to do that. But it's really simple. So when you install all these kind of things, you come here and then you're going to have a token, the token that you get from the NGRO. So you create an account in NGRO. You get this authentication token. You put it in your system environment or in the Colab secret. And then you run this command line. This basically set the token as in warmer variable for NGRO command in its own config, which is in this credential file somewhere in the Linux operating system, similar to the Git. And then you can see the file. It says that I saved into this NGRO.yaml file. So we just leave it. You have to do that. Then it's a simple, fast API server. Uh, let's go through it. First, I create the app server. Then the model size. It should be model size, model name. Okay, let me, I will make a model name. So this is shouldn't be like this. Okay, model name. And then uh model name is uh Sistran. They do have some other models, especially for ASR and diarization rization. So you can detect different speakers. This one also supports that one anyway. There are different things. I will work on that as well. 
And then there are different models. I'm going to pick up the large, not a small one. Imagine if I do the small, it's going to be much faster. And then I create this uh, wrapper around the model. Device is queued up. I'm running in an 800, but honestly, if you run it on L4 or T4, it works well. And then, uh, okay, now I do have this two endpoint. I do have two endpoints. One is streaming. One is just one shot. So look at the one shot first. I get the audio file because we upload the audio bytes. And then here, uh, I just wanted to calculate the start time, you know, how long it's going to take. The model transcribe, you're going to pass this one. And then you can play around with the beam size. You can increase it if the processor, everything is really good. And then... I ask, I want to have the word stamps, the time stamps of each words, and there is initial prompt, supports initial prompt. Uh, so you can pass initial prompt to do that one. And the word time stamps, okay. So then uh, I'll just get the whole thing. What it returns is a list of segments, and each segment has all those tokens, what in the segments, the audio segments, the start times, end times. So you can create a lot of good applications with this, especially when you want to play around with exact time. Then uh, what I did, I just wanted to go through this it's, iterate through this one because each segment has a list of words. I wanted to take all the words, join them together and send it as a kind of JSON. And that's what I got it here. So uh, I'm returning the JSON segments. I added the list in the way that I want it. And uh, it's, it has words and the words has this field start and, and the word itself. So the time, if you want to get the whole things and return it. That's the... Uh, one shot. And now we look at the stream. Stream returns back the text. If you want to get that much of nuances and details, go for this one. But if you want to get just a text, stream way. And that's what I did. So just again, I read the audio and make it bytes IO and then pass it to the model and then uh, stream it and yield the results, segment the text. You can't yield other information, but I wanted to just do the text and then to explain. So two end points. And finally, uh, I have this domain, reserve domain. If you go to the ng-rock, you know, the way that you can connect a running fast API to the, as a kind of tunnel on the outside is very simple. You, you just run at the end your uh, fast API as usual. Before that, you make sure to apply uh, the, the nest asynchronous IO on the monkey patch. And there are two ways to do that. One is just like, go for this one. Look at these two that I commented. You just create a tunnel around the port 8000 for the port 8000, and then you just print the public URL. The public URL has a random code, so it's random. But if you go to the accounts, you can create a subdomain for yourself. And if you're free members or paid members, you're going to have different benefits, but you can create subdomain. And then always it's fixed. But every time you run this, if you don't do that, you're going to get a random domain. Uh, so I put the reserved and the host name here, and I set it. And of course, the public domain is what I wanted. When I do that, the model download is on 1.5 gigabyte, and then I'm going to get the links. So you can see that the links is there, collab.angelbrook.pro. Well, sometimes I turn on this, and if you're lucky, you can use the links, and maybe it works, sometimes not. So create your own links, please. And then that's it. So this is for the server, right? We got it. So very simple, nice, cool, fast. It's great. You can run it on any GPU or MPS device you do have on a CPU as well. If you go for a small one, it works reasonable on CPU as well. Now I'll go and I talk about the library that I created to test this one. Okay, everyone ready? So we're gonna jump to the next part. Okay, this is the code for uh, the fast whisper library. It's in GitHub, you can play around with it and then ask me any questions you have. Okay, first as usual, lots of import and a lot of imports, I mean like, can remove some of them while I'm explaining. Let me. Oh, this is a nice library, by the way. I let you to know that the segment of the audio does it contain the speech or not. So it's, it's really cool. It, it it really gonna be useful. But anyway, I just uh, I detect non-silent as well from the PyDub. So I remove them for now. I don't need it. Uh, basically, what you Py Audio. You need the Py Audio because you want to record. Uh, Hi, Tube, because I want to download from the YouTube the information. Uh, I didn't use Grok. I used the server, but also I added the code that if you want to use a Whisper model from the Grok, which that one is super fast, I created another video about it. This Colorama is just for printing color interface to make you happy myself. <laughs> and then, uh, what is the init? So we go for the init functions. Let's see what init does. 
it looks like another kind of oh yeah this in it is okay this is just something for colorama not nothing very important okay let's back to it so then uh we do have this the endpoint which is the collab in your rope and i'm picking up the stream version but you can change it to anything else you want it um and that is the rate the channel the standard the chunk and threshold the threshold is a silent threshold and i'll talk about it and uh this is there's a silence duration there are two or a form of um uh, it, it takes one one second if you talk and you stop and then you don't say anything it wastes one second if that cross one second then send it to transcription so that's it works that's how it works uh i create the <clears throat> audio from the pi, pi audio the, the instant the one that is in charge of creating a stream from microphone and also i create this well uh i create the kind of priority queue queue means that when i record some things put it on the queue, then the transcription process happening in parallel, and then I wait for the queue to result to come. The reason I did this is because I want to add another ability to whenever I detect a little silence when you're talking and then talking and then waiting, take those audio chunks, tr transcribe them, put them in the queue, get them back the result, then you fill the real-time um, audio conversion, the one that I did in the Jarvis project. So you can also reach that one and then play around with it. This is the record audio. Um, this is the simple press enter to continue the queue here okay here's just those kind of settings that you can pass to audio and open a stream channel for you now you do have the stream of the microphone and the frames is where that you save all the audio uh, data data is dirt just gonna add it all the frames of like a frame of the image in the video each image is the frame and then uh and then this while true worked work till you take a silent what it happened we get a chunk so you set the chunk. What was the chunk? 1024. So 1024 chunks, bytes of the data, then go to the uh, frame. So we add it to the frame of the data. Okay, now what do we do with the data in the frames? What I do is this. I'll look, look at the energy of the sound. If the energy is lesser than some, some threshold, I consider silent. This is one way. There are different ways to do that. Like the one I show you at the very beginning. You can use some extra library, but I wanted to do it in my own way. And to do that, I will look at uh, the data and I look at the maximum amount of the data. So convert it from the buffer, I convert it to NumPy array. And then I'll look at the maximum. If the maximum is lesser than a threshold, the maximum, the power of the energy of the sound, then I consider, okay, I got a silent chunk, one, two. And then when this crosses this threshold, which is basically this conversion between the time to uh the amount of the audio chunks then i say i detected the silent remember the silent duration was one second and the rate is sixteen thousand per second so sixteen thousand data sampling per second divide by the chunks so how many chunks will be you know you can you can guess so one second we sample sixteen thousand so sixteen thousand divided by thousand twenty four will be around fifteen so if i detect that fifteen consequently fifteen silent chunks this is equivalent by one seconds of data sampling, audio sampling of something that we call it threshold, uh, silent because the energy was lower than the threshold. So you can play around with the threshold. There are adaptive approach also to play around with the threshold if you're in a noisy environment. And well, wait, this is not a topic of here. And we get it, close the stream and done. So now we have the frame, the audio frame. Then I do have this uh, uh, function. It's a very simple one. It's a standard one. It goes and get the YouTube URL and extract the title, uh, then go and open the file and read it. You know, it's just all happening here. And then when, and so this is the download from the YouTube. But let me continue with the microphone and I will come here. So let's go to the microphone. Okay, this is the main. Here is the microphone. And I'll, I'll record a call the functions and I have the frames, all the data. And then I convert into the bytes IO. I basically, and I use the Wave library. Wave library tends to the Wave format is good when you're working with the Whisper OpenAI or this one or the Grok. So it, it really saves a lot of time. And I convert it, set the channels, the samples, the rate again, and I convert them to the byte. I decode, encode them with the bytes and then close. And now audio bytes contains the data that you can send to the servers. So I stick to the zero, I bring the pointer to the beginning of the file. And then I go and I call uh, process single transaction. And this one, uh, when we go into the file, the function, 
I don't need to do this, but anyway, I don't know why I did it uh, because I'm doing it on that side. But anyway, so here, uh, first I use PIDA to calculate the duration of the sound. If you remember, it was since 15 minutes. That's what I do here. And I just print it simply. Simply I say that this is the audio we're going to process. We're going to start and it's going to take like this time. I'm converted to the format that you saw there. And, I've, and, and you have to do this this time because it goes through the file to know how long it is that, the file. And then uh, you remember the queue. So I'm creating the queue, the queue from the top. And I get the queue. And I have the engine. Engine can be Grok or can be this uh, collab. By default, it's a collab. And I call the functions, pass this, and pass the queue. It added to the queue. And then, uh, and then I wait for the queue to be ready. So this is a way that I can send other audio segments at the same time. Some audio segments may take time, some not. But at this case, this just doesn't matter. It's just only one. And now when I get it, uh, if there is output file, means the output file is passed to these functions you will see later. I save it to the file. If not, I just print it in the screen. So we had a microphone, open the stream channels, record, wait for crossing 15 silence or one second, and then send the audio frames data. Then here we get it, we send it to the server, transcribe it, and then save it. And how we transcribe, let's go and look at the transcription. We just send the post to the URL, files, audio, audio bytes. And initial prompt is nothing. Maybe I can add a command to come online to get the initial, and, and then uh, a prompt, and also the stream is true. So we go through the stream, and then we add the results, and then I just put in the queue. Well, I could basically print it, right? I can just print it, but it's super fast, so I just, I don't know why I call it the stream. Anyway, you can also call the, the one we now the stream. So we don't need this stuff because I'm doing it. Maybe I can clean the code a little bit while we're here. That's it. And when you look at the Grok, it's basically very simple. You just need the Grok API, definitely. And then run it here. And then just call it. So it's, uh, it's very simple. Just go to the file. Let's create the temp files. Just the only thing is that, actually, I could do that. I don't need this one as well. But anyway, I can pass the audio buffer directly to Grok as well. So this is way when you do the microphone. And then if you're interested, you can go through the YouTube as well, which is extract the audio, turn the audio to the byte IO streams, and then send it to the file and then the transcriber. So it just basically is very similar. But the very important thing is here, you have these commands. For example, when you say YouTube, it goes to YouTube. It get the audio bytes, then come here, send it to the function again. If you set the audio file, go and read the audio file and then get the audio bytes and then send it here. So either through the microphone or the YouTube or the audio file, you're going to send it here and then you save it. You know, you can extend these projects by, for example, adding command to summarize, or extract key points. So you have your own CLI, you can run it, whatever you want it. But the interesting thing I want you guys to remember is how nicely we are using this and running it in a collab and it's your own and that's beautiful. Very good. So this was um, my video for how to set up uh, this fast Whisper server on the collab and then that uh, library. Uh, you can go to here. So that's the um, repository. It has the IPy the uh, uh, Jupyter for the server. Uh, but of course, you can down turn, convert it to the Python and run it anywhere you want it, and the script. Let me know if you have any questions. This was one of the longest videos that I really created, so I hope it was useful. <laughs> uh, stay tuned. I'm working on something really cool about, as you know, function calling, and I'm going to talk about it very soon. Have a good day, night, wherever you are, you good people.